to St. Thomas More Newman Center, or Ministry of the Paulist Fathers. Uh, today is the uh, feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Our uh, presider this morning is Father Charlie Donahue. Uh, if anyone is here for the first time or 
back after a long absence, please be aware that we do want you to leave your masks on at all times. No eating or drinking in the building at this time. Um, please sing and proclaim loudly with your heart, but softly with your lips, since we're all sharing the air. And uh, finally, we're not passing the baskets at this time, uh, but we do have um, a basket in the very center of the worship space back there if you want to leave an offering for the Newman Center. Let's rise and join together in praise to God in song. Feast of the Holy Family, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of their Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Coming together as the family of God on this feast of families, we call upon the tender mercies of God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all sin, and lead us to everlasting life. Good will. 
sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the whole who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, fear not Abram, I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless and have as my heir the steward of my house, Eliezer? Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah as he had said he would. He did for her as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son of his, whom Sarah bore him. The word of the Lord.
your spouse shall be like a fruitful vine in the midst of your home. Your children flourish like olive plants, rejoicing at your table. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you. Blessed are those who seek you, O God. May the blessings of God be yours all the days of your life. May the peace and the love of God live always in your heart. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you. Blessed are those who seek you, O God. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these put on love, that is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands, as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, so they may not become discouraged. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord. 
and to offer of sacrifice a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate of the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, Simeon took him in his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted and you yourself a sword shall pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was, there was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, she was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The gospel of the Lord. Before I dive into the homily in earnest, I do want to address the paragraph we heard in the second reading. It begins, wives, be submissive to your husbands. I am a firm believer in the long form. Every now and then, the lectionary gives you a shorter form, longer form. There is an option to remove that paragraph, but if you, if you, I don't know if you've ever met Father Bob Moran, Paul's father. Uh, he taught me a lot, and one of the things he taught us was if you're going to bump into it when you read your Bible at home, and we have not addressed it here, then we're not doing our job. As a non-husband, all I can really put out there is words. I love words. Submissive. Under. Mission. In a sense, it doesn't matter who in a family is the one who carries the flag. But if a family as a gaggle of people loving one another, their mission is to go forth into the world under that banner of love. In a sense, we're all invited to be submissive to one another, to give our lives for the other. I hope that helps. 
So it was somewhere in the summer of 1973 or 1974, I don't know the exact year. My nuclear family was at my Nana's farm, my dad's mom, for most of the summer. It was doubly exciting because my aunt and uncle on my mother's side were coming for a visit with their new daughter, Samara, who'd be less than a year old. I was doubly excited because I would not only get to meet my new cousin, but also both sides of our family would meet up. Country mouse and city mouse a little. When they did arrive, it was neat. Samara was indeed a gorgeous baby. In fact, she was drafted to be one of the crawling, smiling babies in a Pampers commercial back in the day. Anyway, like a lot of kids, I had a little bear growing up. My Nana made it, and I'm holding it in my like toddler pictures. I don't remember ever getting it. It was just always there. I love this little guy. And growing from a baby to then seven-year-old, we had been through a lot together. The problem was Samara, the infant, took a liking to the bear. It was my own fault I had introduced them. And it was nice to have him around and to see her play with him. But Samara really liked him. It was suggested that I might let Samara take him home with her when they left. This was not a happy thing for me. But I was at that age when I didn't need the bear but I really, really, really wanted him. I'm pretty sure my dad played the, but you're a big boy, and she's just a baby, card. And so when they drove off, as we were all waving at them, I was waving at them, and my now former bear, on his way to his new assignment. Bewildered and somewhat miffed, my Nana sweetly, and observant, made another bear, but it wasn't him. So we are celebrating the feast of the Holy Family this weekend, and it's fitting that on this first Sunday, just a few days after Christmas, we contemplate and pray with the Holy Family, this grace-filled threesome, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, and their new Domus Ecclesia, their new church of their home. But we know from history and from scripture that these were not peace-filled days all around them. The days were dangerous even. But for now, there is peace, as long as the sounds and smells of a barn 2,000 years ago are okay for you. And in the gospel today, we recount the presentation of the child Jesus in the temple. And it is a glorious scene. In the midst of it all, there is Simeon, a devout and holy man, who, the scriptures tell us, made it to the temple every day for prayer and petition. And Anna, from this gospel story, who in her widowhood, it says, never left the temple. Simeon and Anna speak prophetically, bluntly, directly, gratefully. And they foretell the difficulty in the Holy Family's life. Now, in a sense, this is much like our own lives, where the good and the bad, the hard and the easy, the confusing and the clear, and as our marriage vows state, sickness and health, richer for poorer, loving and honoring, and all the rest in the roller coaster of life. 
Now, contemplating the Holy Family may come easy for some of us. I've honestly grown up in a marvelous family. I love them all dearly. Today is the sixth anniversary of my sister's death. We've been visited by disease and violence, but we are all together, even as we're flung across the country, as we remember and pray with all those who have passed. Thinking of the Holy Family may come very difficultly for some of us. The experiences of abandonment and violence and resentments and substance abuse and so many other aspects can all play a role. So we create families of sorts, don't we? Friends who go through similar experiences Veterans bonded through danger and service and mourning. LGBT folks who create families of choice, planting flags as new kinds of families. Couples who have fallen in love. Couples who have fallen out of love. Folks who commit through thick and thin with one another. Religious communities like the Paulist Fathers all staking claim as family. And of course, the welcoming of children as folks are able, and the difficulties that can arise around hope and infertilities. It does not come until a bit later in the Gospels, but recall the wedding at Cana. Jesus and his mother were there, the two of them, as a family among family. There's no mention of Joseph. We can surmise that Joseph has passed away. Now this wedding becomes the site of Jesus' first miracle. I have long been struck by the fact that Jesus' first miracle was not the healing of or the raising of Joseph, Jesus' father in the world, teaching us that even in the holiest of families, suffering and hardship have their place. Again, kind of like us and our striving for holiness in the context of our lives and our families and our communities, now, this pandemic has wreaked havoc in many ways. But along with the suffering and the work and the care and the deaths and the recoveries, there is this isolation that affects us all so deeply. And I thank God that there are smart people who've invented technologies from the telephone to Zoom and some social media that enable some kind of breaks in this isolation. And please know that prayer can break the isolation in ways that people who may have rejected faith may not understand. We can always begin again when we pray, when we pray, even in that secret place that the Gospels speak of. We are one with so many others. And as the astronauts abiding in space have taught us from their pictures, we can contemplate just how big our one big human family truly is on this big blue marble, as the poets say. So back in 2005, about a month after I was ordained a priest, my cousin Samara got married. Lovely fellow, her fiance Pete. He may be, they may be watching this. It was my first wedding as a priest, and I submit that I may have been more anxious than the bride and the groom. <laughs> a few months later, celebrating Thanksgiving, we were at my Aunt Elizabeth and my Uncle Jim's house, Samara's parents. And in the course of small talk and checking in with each other, Samara approached me 
with a little bear in her hand. So I was packing things up, and I saw this. My mom said it was yours back in the day. Would you like it back? Stunned, it all came back to me. I'm pretty sure I just said something like, yes, please. I'm a little embarrassed to tell you that I tried to casually leave the room with this little guy. I found an occupied room and I cried, holding this little guy, united and grateful. Not too long after, Samara and Pete had a son. I was going to fly in to baptize him. It was suggested that I might want to give him the bear. <laughs> ben got a lovely card and a candle, and the bear stayed on the shelf. This feast of the Holy Family should remind us not that Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were some kind of perfect and problem-free family. I actually wish our Gospels contained more of their adventures as a family. But perhaps it's just as well. For today's Gospel ends with, the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. As we say of Jesus, let us pray for each other that we may say the same in our growth and love. And so perhaps even say it with me. So please do repeat after me. State your name. Is growing and becoming strong. Filled with wisdom. And the favor of God is upon State your name. And so we stand and profess our common faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of our world to come. Amen. Mindful of so many needs, we bring all our prayers to God. For the church around the world this Christmas, 
for all those who welcome the birth of Jesus into our world, for unity, peace, and our witness to the gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, receive our prayer. For families and all folks in the midst of this pandemic, for all those separated and alone for the safety and protection of the most vulnerable, and in gratitude for the technology that allows folks to gather virtually, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, receive our prayer. For diplomats and civil leaders around the world, for refugees and migrants seeking sanctuary and safety, that churches and nations to respond generously to their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, receive our prayer. For all those facing economic hardship these hard days, that our communities, state, and nation respond generously with support, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, For all the students, faculty, and staff of OSU and area schools during this break, for the health and safety of all this coming new year, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, receive our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Andre Maurice Hill and Casey Christopher Goodson, killed this month here in Columbus, for racial justice in our city, state, and nation, for policing reform that would help lead to public safety for all of our fellow citizens, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, receive our prayer. For all the sick in body, mind, or spirit, and those who care for them, for patience and healing, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, receive our prayer for all those who have died especially Jean Kingery mother of community member Michael Kingery Bernard Mertz father of community member Janice Lonsdale and Pete McLaren former music director here and all those who mourn them let us pray to the Lord Loving God, and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, receive our prayer. Loving God, receive our prayer. Gracious and loving God, you know us better than we know ourselves. Read our hearts, hear our prayers. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us our drink of life. Blessed be God forever. Lord, we please with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin, make me more like my dad. We offer, pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. And we'll make sense the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, 
you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he appeared visibly in ours. And begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that, raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call a straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. And to be glorified, O God, you who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journeys of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for his disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said your blessing. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate this memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblations of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and into the days of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop with all the bishops, priests, and deacons and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ 
and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your apostles and martyrs, with Saints Simeon and Anna, and with all your saints, we shall praise you and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and her unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another as we are able a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
touch their hearts of gold. Peace on the earth, good will to all from heaven's all gracious King. The world in song. Those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. There really is only two announcements. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, and please know that over the next few weeks, the mass schedule, uh, the mass schedules are, are different. And you can check them out at BuckeyeCatholic.com. Um, the, the, the standard Saturday 5.30, 10 and 12 will always be there. But there'll be different masses for, on New Year's Day for Mary, Mother of God, and um, in the coming weeks. And then lastly, just thank you. Um, it's been a really wonderful two and a half years with you. Um, mostly, <laughs> and um, I just, um, I guess I was, I was speaking with um, Father Vinny yesterday. The, I'm really grateful to have been here during the COVID craziness. I, I mean, it, I, there's nothing good about COVID, don't get me wrong, but the nimbleness to which this community dove into the weirdnesses, the difficulties, the technologies. Um, I sat on the phone with a bunch of people helping them get on Zoom and get it to work. Um, our community Bible study, Deep, Deep in Your Faith Wednesday group, usually had about 40 or 50 people any given week. We were in the 70s on Zoom. Yeah, it's because I think we found another audience, honestly, of people who would like to be here but can't come here, even with or without COVID. It's been wonderful. And I'm deeply grateful for your fellowship, 
Please keep me in your prayers, and I will keep you in my prayers as well. Thanks. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth in great joy to love and serve our Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. We do ask that we do exit out the Lane Avenue side. If you do have any mobility issues, please feel free to go straight to the parking lot. But um, we do want to keep that habit going as best we can. Thanks. Joyful.